Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I guess we're doing kind of like a get ready with me using like my shot my stash or my project pan items, but also mixing in new makeup because I'm trying to find like a balance of working on the products that I've put into projects, but also I have a new makeup drawer full of things that like some things haven't been touched in like over a year. I don't know. So kind of what happened is I actually started filming my makeup inventory for 2023 and it kind of like stressed me out actually realizing how many things that I've purchased in the last, well in 2022 I guess since I did the last inventory and there were so many things especially like in the blush category I haven't even got to the lip category that's a whole other story but my blushes and face palettes it's anyway I have to start putting makeup on or we'll be here for seven hours but I have only my skincare on today and I found like my eyes look really strange, like red and sunken in. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, so I thought I would put my Tatcha the Pearl and see if that helps. So this is a product um, that I bought a long time ago. This doesn't even exist anymore and I don't use it enough. It's something I've been like unofficially trying to pan but you just use so little of it at a time that I don't know it's gonna take a while I mean I have made some good progress on it and if you've been following my journey with this product um you would know that I brought it on a trip once and like a whole like this whole chunk basically went into the cap so I used up everything that went into the cap. So I'm, you know, considering that progress. But you can't overdo it with this because you will just end up having too much product under your eye. I feel like that did help a little. Yeah, I should use this more. <laughs> so for the face, I wanted to um, use the Pure 4-in-1 Correcting Primer that I pulled into my, did I call it a whole collection project then? I'm, I think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is a, it's a silicone free like gel moisturizer type primer. It's supposed to energize and rescue with aloe, coconut water, and probiotics. And I do really like this because it reminds me of the First Aid Beauty Coconut Skin Smoothie Primer, which is one of my favorites. But I thought I would mix in a little of my Drunk Elephant Umber Tint just to, you know, try and use that up because that's another product I want gone this year. So I'm gonna take that much of the Pure and then mix just a small amount of the Drunk Elephant. So you can see it's like a tinted, uh, it's a tinted sunscreen basically, but it expired so I don't consider it sunscreen anymore. I just consider it like a glowy primer now. <laughs> but yeah, I actually have never done this before with these two products, so I hope it works. <laughs> Feels nice, moisturizing. Yeah, that looks like it's. A f it works as a mixture, and for my base, I want to hit my goal on the Rose Ink Skin Enhanced Luminous Tinted Serum because. Again, when I film my inventory, I started with face products. So 
I realized I had a BB cream in my new makeup drawer that has SPF 40 in it and it expires next year. It's, um, what is it? <laughs> I forgot the brand. I think it's Pure Lease. I'll just show you. Yeah, Pure Lease Ageless, Ageless Glow <laughs> Serum BB Cream. And I really want to use this because it sounds like something I really like, but it expires April 7th, 2024. So I definitely want to switch this out for this one because this product doesn't have SPF in it. It does say that after you open it, it's good for 12 months. I never pay attention to those things. I only care about expiry dates when there's SPF because if an SPF expires, to me it means like it's not going to work anymore. So I definitely want to get the benefits of the SPF out of this. And maybe I won't even like this. I'm just saying. I need to try it. <laughs> so I believe I said I wanted to use this 10 times. I hope that's correct. I hope I didn't say <laughs> I wanted to use it up. I can just check my computer to make sure. Yes, I said I only wanted to use it 10 times. I've already used it two times, so today will be my third use. So this is going well. I did kind of notice this shade is actually a little too light for me, which is weird because we're in the dead of winter. Um, it's the shade 40. And I got the concealer in the same number, and that's too dark. So I'm having trouble with the shade range on the rose ink products but i do really like this product i will say you have to apply it with a brush it actually says on the bottle you pump it on the back of your hand and mix with a foundation brush and then apply it but i feel like you would waste so much product doing that because this is a serum at least for me and like my dry hands i feel like the product would just absorb into my hand while i'm <laughs> mixing it so i just put it directly on the brush and I am using the Rare Beauty foundation brush. I used this last time I applied this product and I really liked it. So I'm gonna do one pump and it looks crazy at first because it's not mixed yet. But when you like put it on your skin, you start to, you know, blend it out. So you're gonna see how light this is. Like, what? <laughs> when did that happen? I feel like the last time, like the first time I tried this, I did not realize it was light for me. So, I think this is a product I would repurchase in the future. Um, but definitely not this shade. Because it kind of like wipes me out yeah and i find that one pump only is enough for this area and i need more for my five head so i'm gonna do not a full pump am i kind of like half i guess but yeah i've tried this product applied with a sponge and it just does not work at all because the product goes right into your sponge and you're basically then just dabbing a damp sponge on your face and wasting the product and this is not cheap <laughs> so I don't want to do that ever again and I also find this is a product that I like better as the day goes on it just wears really nicely and it's so thin and like watery almost but you can see like it does have coverage so yeah, I'm really liking this. I don't even think I'm going to use my spot concealer today. Um, I just don't feel like I really need it. It's my, you know, what's it called? Like the area where I break out the most is here. And it looks, it looks okay. I mean, you can still see some of my redness but I don't think it's enough to need a spot concealer so I'm just gonna go right in with my under eye concealer which is the elf well right now because it's in my 
shot my stash right yeah <laughs> this makeup forever um, matte velvet skin concealer is in my whole collection project pan but this is in my shot my stash see how confusing this gets i really don't know how people that do like multiple projects how they keep track of what's where because <laughs> i'm only doing the whole collection deck of panning and i have a shot my stash rotating and i'm already like what what's going on so <laughs> i don't know i would love if um people that i watch that do pen panning content i would love to see them just do a video on how they organize themselves because i find it very interesting <laughs> anyway i said in the whole collect no i said in my shot my stash i think i said this in a video that i did not like this concealer when i first tried it but actually every time i've used it since i really do like it and i think maybe what happened when i first used it is that i set my concealer and this concealer on my skin does not need to be set because even though it's called a hydrating concealer i feel like it has almost like a powdery finish so if i set it with powder it just ends up looking like really crepey and gross so i honestly just leave it as is and it doesn't really crease like it creases the normal amount like we all have lines under our eyes but it doesn't like the product itself doesn't gather up you know so i actually am really happy that i like this product because it's very affordable i mean it's from elf so yeah and in this i have the shade fair warm which i mean yeah i guess it's warm so i think that was all the like old products that i wanted to use everything else is gonna be just me playing with new stuff so i did do a color pop haul no i did a color pop order i did not do a haul because i just found like that mega haul that was like two long videos and i don't i didn't want to do another haul so i'm just gonna throw it in here um because i could not resist the new collection for valentine's day the flirty talk palette but you will be happy to know i did not buy the full collection like i always do with ColourPop. um mostly because i don't even know where i would put that stuff i did really want the highlighters but i literally have no room for more makeup especially like chunky heart-shaped makeup in my storage <laughs> So I think that's the only reason I didn't buy those. But I did have to get the palette. Um, I also really wanted to try the um, glowing lips. I've never tried this formula from ColourPop. And what else did I get? Oh, I did also get the, the lip scrub and the lip balm duo. But I got that for a gift for my mom for Valentine's Day. Because I don't need... <laughs> I don't need any more lip balms or lip scrubs, but it looked really cute. And um, last year I gave her the duo from the Secret Admirer collection. So now it's like a tradition that that's her Valentine's gift. But anyway, yeah, so I got that. And uh, then I, <laughs> I wanted to get free shipping and the ColourPop Malibu Barbie collection is something, you know those like makeup releases that you want but you don't get them but then you keep thinking about them for like years later and that's how, <laughs> that's what happened with this so every time I would go buy something from ColourPop I would check if this was on sale and it happened to be on sale when I got the Fleur de Talk products. Uh, so I got the bundle of the Malibu Barbie pressed powder palette. Um, it came with the 
lip duos. So I got all three of these. Um, they're very cute. I love the packaging. I love this one that it's called Dream House. Um, I did have the Barbie Dream House as a kid and it was like my favorite thing ever. <laughs> and it came with the hand mirror which came in this cute box that I, I keep like on my display area. Um, at least for like this time of year I think it's cute like pink and springy and yeah. But I have to show you this. Like, look at the attention to detail, even the inside of the box. I just can't resist ColourPop stuff. When it's something that I like, because like that collection they just released, the Winx, I have no idea what that is. I think I'm too old for that. <laughs> but I'm definitely not too old for Barbie. Um, so this mirror, if I can get it out, how cute. I love it. So yeah, I might use this while I'm doing my eyeshadow. Um, yeah, so where do I begin? <laughs> I don't I don't think I'm gonna use the palette today. I just wanted to mention that I purchased it, so if you see it in my makeup inventory or whatever and I haven't hauled it, that's why. And this is like heavy. They really did um, this collection well. And this is definitely a summer palette for me with these like bright blues and pinks, but it's so cute. And I didn't even know that this was gonna have little embossings, like, I don't know. I'm very happy I got this. And I think it was like 50% off for the bundle. It was a really good deal. But yeah, back to the Flirty Talk palette, the whole reason I placed the order. This is a pressed powder palette. And when I first saw this release, I was like, oh, I don't need that because I got <clears throat> the Secret Admirer palette last year and I pulled this into my Shop My Stash. And I was like, those look kind of similar. But after I saw like more promo photos, I was like, oh no, that's not the same. So this is the Secret Admirer from last year. This is a very like mid-tone pink palette, leaning like more berry tones, I feel. And then the Flirty Talk, which opens like a book. Very cute, if I can do it. <laughs> um, Look how cute. So this one is more pink and red and like bright. So again, to hold them up like side by side. Right? I mean, they're still similar, but I just feel like this was different enough that I, I don't know, talked myself into buying it. So I think we're gonna use this today. I don't know why I went right, <clears throat> right into eyeshadow um, and didn't do the rest of my face, but I guess we'll come back to that. <laughs> I'm going to use my Urban Decay uh, Primer Potion as usual. Oh, I definitely used too much of that, yeah, because I was actually trying to see how much of that I had left, and because I squeezed it, it like pushed all the product onto the wand and yeah that was too much <laughs> the key with this product is to use a small amount as i mentioned like in a lot of videos but so i'm going to start with the shade head over heels this like light pink shade oh that's very light. Maybe I should zoom in. <laughs> yeah, so I just zoomed you in a little because you can't see anything. Um, yeah, so I'm basically using 
this as my base for the look okay yeah that's definitely you can see it um, even though it's such a light shade, you can see like how it brightened. There was kick up in the pan, but um, yeah, I just blew it away. So I think I'm gonna go in with well, yeah. This shade talked to me. At first, I thought it was a matte, but it's one of the matte with shimmers, which I actually don't mind from ColourPop. They're usually really nice formulas um but for the crease do i want that i guess so yeah let's try it oh it's very dusty that's very pretty I might deepen up the outer corner later, but I really want to put a shimmer on the lid. And I think it's going to be this shade Cuddle Up. This one looks so pretty. Um, let's try it with a brush first. Yeah, that's going on nicely with the brush. Yeah, I feel like I don't have a lot of pinks in this tone in my collection. Usually they're like very bright pinks, like the ones in the Malibu Barbie, or they're more like dusty. These are like true pink shades, and I really like this. Um, I really want to try this shade though, also, Be Mine. I can't... <laughs> I can't tell if that's a press glitter. It looks... Let's just touch it. Okay. It does, like, have the feeling of a press glitter, but it also has, like, a thick base to it. So I think I'm going to put that in the middle of my eyelid. Yeah, that's going on like a glitter, but if I do this, yeah, it's gonna stick to the eye. I think this is what ColourPop is doing for their press glitters now because they know people don't like <laughs> press glitters. So they just put like a base to them where it's almost like between a press glitter and a metallic eyeshadow. But that is really pretty. I did get fallout though. Yeah, that's on there <laughs> so probably with that shade uh use a glitter glue uh which i could have done but yeah i didn't so there we go yes i do think i want to deepen up the outer v a little so i'm gonna go in with the shade your fave which is this pretty shade here but just a little dab. I like that. And for the lower lash line, I think I'm gonna go back in with Talk To Me, even though it's like a matte shimmer. But I kinda want that tone on the bottom too. Cause I don't love putting like this shade of pink on the lower lash line because sometimes it could just make my eyes look like red and like sickly. <laughs> so I just wanted to use the lighter shade. And then there's a shade here which looks to be a super shock. This one. This is the shade Just My Type. I don't know how well you can see on camera how that has like the super shock kind of formula because this one on your mind is more like another matte shimmer yes that's exactly what it is well that looks super pigmented for a white so yeah if you wanted to do a matte inner corner this one would be 
nice but I think I want to do a shimmer so I'm going to use just my type and we'll see if I can pick it up on a brush because I don't like putting inner corner shade with my finger because I just oh yeah that's a super shock look what happened I could like hit pan on that <laughs> right now if I tried um yes wow okay that is the softest shade I've ever seen in a palette it's just like putty okay so let's see how this goes on I should use the mirror the Barbie mirror take this off so you can hopefully see what I'm doing Yes, that definitely has a pink shift, which is what I would expect <laughs> from this palette. Yeah, the thing is, you kind of have to apply that with your finger or else it doesn't like stick to your eye. Okay, let's try. Yeah, that's way better can see that there that's really pretty do I want to put a bit of that on my brow bone I'll just take the excess I think well I kind of used it all because for my brow bone I don't want that much pigmentation yeah that's enough just like a little so that when you move around you can see there's like some shimmer there I think I like this I mean it's nothing <laughs> extraordinary I could have used some more of the deeper shades but you guys know I don't I usually do light lighter looks especially during the day and this is like an actual get ready with me like I'm leaving my house so I'm not really prepared to do like a red smoky eye right now <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna do the other eye off camera and then I'll be back to play with some blushes and highlighters and lip products I have so much stuff here okay I'm back with mascara and the other eye obviously <laughs> um, I'm using a new mascara well new to me the pure fully charged uh, mascara powered by magnetic technology and I think I like the formula but I don't like the wand because it makes a mess like on my lower lash line because there's no like shape to it it's just like a straight like a rectangle you know so I did get some like a few places which I'll, I'll clean that up later but I, at least I finally found a mascara in my collection that is still good. I, you'll see in my empties video whenever I get around to filming that. There's going to be like 10 mascaras in there. <laughs> because I I kept pulling one, trying it, too dry, too goopy, like not even usable. So yeah, at least this one is still good. Um, and I wanted to do my brows on camera because I want to try something. If you guys have watched my pan those eyeshadows videos, you'll know I'm not doing well on that project. But this shade from the ABH Sultry palette, the shade Dystopian is in that project. And I thought I would try to use it on my eyebrows because the product in my whole collection project pen right is the Patrick Ta uh, brow wax or shaping wax they call it and this on its own does not do enough for me I really miss my essence make me brow but I use that till like there was literally not a drop left in it so right now this is all I have for brows in my new makeup drawer and this is what it's happening this is what's happening <laughs> so that's what's left and it doesn't even like fit in this 
pen anymore like it shrunk and also it's curved and not obviously not glued down anymore so i don't know what to do with this but i at least want to hit my goal before i make a decision so i think what i'm gonna do is with my patrick ta like brow thing that goes with the wax i'm gonna take this end which is just like a slanted brush and like dab it in the dystopian shade i'm trying to put that in my brows let's just see together what happens um i was inspired <laughs> to do this from it's just death because she just filmed a video um i right the sultry palette is her panda palette for this year i'm pretty sure and she was talking about how this shade she was using as a brow as a brow powder but that it now it's like super dry and i even commented on her video like Oh, that, that shade's in my Pando's eyeshadows and it's actually just dry as bones, like, to begin with. And she thought that was funny. Um, but yeah, so it kind of made me think, maybe I should just use that on my brows. Because it is, like, a cool tone brown. And I actually think that is working really well. Because I hate that shadow on my eyes. It's too, it's, like, literally too pigmented. Um, which you might be like, how can a shadow be too pigmented? Don't we all want pigmented eyeshadows? And no, like, it's so pigmented that you can't, like, blend it out. Like, it's patchy and it sticks down where you apply it. So, yeah. <laughs> but it is the shade I used the most in that project because, like, I mean, you can make it work if you're really trying, but I have so many eyeshadows, like, why should I not be happy when I'm doing my eyeshadow? Like, I, I don't have room for that in my life. <laughs> I don't have room for that negativity, but I actually am liking this. Okay, this is exciting. And I'm really like using the tiniest amount because it is such a dark shade. But yeah, so the clear brow wax, it's just not enough to make me feel like my brows are there. Because my brows are very, um, I have a lot of hairs, but they're thin. Like, like the hair on my head. I have a lot of it, but it's, but each strand is so like fine that if I only put a sheer, I mean, if I only put a clear gel in them, it's not going to, like, do anything for me. Especially that Patrick Ta one, because it's, it really, like, makes your brows stand up. And then you can just see, like, how sparse my brows are, <laughs> I feel. So, I'm going to try this, and then see how... The wax goes on top. Okay, I think this side got a little too dark. See? Even as a brow powder, you have to be careful with this shade. And I just don't want to have to be careful when I'm doing eyeshadow, you know? But the color is exactly what I want for my brows. I don't like when my brows look red or like too warm. Okay, I think that's the best I can do. If you're also using this, I feel like everyone is using the sultry palette in some kind of project. So if you have trouble with the dystopian shade, try it as a brow powder. So now what I have to do with the wax, because it's not even in the pan, I have to hold, hold this, spray it. And I'm just using the In Beauty spray because that's the one in my project pan. And this, my other issue with this product is it does say 
use a setting spray or water. So if it's looking like this because I use setting spray, I mean, you told me I could, so why? Why doesn't it work? <laughs> So I just sprayed a little and then I go in with the spoolie and just like try to hold it while I'm doing this. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't have time for this. I think I'm just gonna hit my goal on this product and then call it done because, come on. Like how would I even save this? I thought maybe if I like heated it up and tried to melt the bottom, then I could put it back in. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to, you know. So let's see. And I don't want to mess my base because last time I used this, I applied way too much. Yeah, but when this product was, when the pan was fine, I actually did like this product because I feel like it does what I want it to do and it doesn't like feel crispy or like crunchy in your brows. So I like that about it, but I would just prefer a gel like in a tube, like with a wand. Because this is just too much work for me. But it does have a nice effect. So I think I'm going to leave it there before I go crazy like I did last time. And end up with like brows glued straight up <laughs> to my head. Yeah, so that's my brow story. But let's um, put blush on. First let me clean my mascara. Flakes. I didn't even put bronzer on either. See, I mentioned this in my inventory video when I saw how many bronzers I had and I was like, I don't even remember to put bronzer on half the time. This is an example. <laughs> so the bronzer that I'm working on is the Alamar Cosmetics Hydrating Complexion Trio the shade Cafe Con Leche. It's very light, um, but I don't mind it. I like the formula. And actually I'm already looking pale from the rose ink product, so <laughs> it's okay that it's lighter bronzer. But in the summer, I don't know how well, this would work for me. Like, if I actually get a tan, I feel like you would not see this on me. Oh, I am wearing the heart clips from the ColourPop Secret Admirer collection. I tried to look, like, festive for Valentine's Day, but you can't even see them on camera. So, in my new makeup drawer, I had... Um, the Rare Beauty Positive Light Silky Touch Highlighter in Mesmerize. I got this for Christmas because I asked for it. Well, it was on my loves list and I told my mom, um, because she asked me for a Christmas list. So I just sent her my Sephora <laughs> loves list. And she actually found the Rare Beauty Mesmerize shade because these were sold out for a while. It's like a nice rose gold that could go really nicely. Um, but in my Shaw My Stash, I actually might just use both of these products because the Charlotte Tilbury Glow Gap, there's a cat hair flying around. I don't know where that went, but it's definitely on my face somewhere. <laughs> um, this, yes. Charlotte Tilbury Glow Gasm Beauty Light Wand. High blush? I'm confused. Um, it's the shade Pink Gasm. Okay, that hair is on my face. Oh, I got it. Okay. That was going to drive me nuts. So this is in my shop, my stash. I've never used it once. 
I swatched it and I don't remember if it's a blush or a highlighter but um, yeah that's gonna be a blush for me so so maybe I don't want to use this because I just got the Pillow Talk Matte Beauty, Matte Beauty Blush Wand Easy Liquid Blush in the shade Pink Pop. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I want to use this instead. Ooh. I have high expectations for this because it was expensive and everyone's raving about it. So even though I haven't used this one yet, I really want to try this matte. Okay, so if I'm going in with cream blush, I won't do the powder highlighter till later. But I also have the Too Faced Cloud Crush Blurring Blush in the shade Watermelon Green. I love this packaging. It has a little heart here. Uh, can I open this? Oh, which looks like that. That could be really pretty. It smells fun. And I also have the Janessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder Flushed in the shade Golden Hour. Mm. I might save this for another video, um, trying more Janessa Myricks products, but I wanted to show this to you because I haven't hauled it or anything. The packaging is so fun. It's like the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder which I have and I want to use these two together because they're in the same line but um, it has an opening where you can see the shade and then you twist it open and it's like this this looks beautiful so yeah I think I'll save this but I also got that I got this and the Charlotte Tilbury in the same order and then I was like why don't I just buy two cream blushes <laughs> I'm on a cream blush no buy, so yeah. Um, see, so I think because I want to, I want to try this, I will do these two. So I'm gonna put this on first. So it's one of these squeezy tubes with the puff on the end, and I never know. Oh, it was off. You have to turn it. <laughs> it says here. Um, so I never know how much. Okay, it's coming out. So, um, I did watch Babs Beauty because she got all of the shades and I think she said this was her favorite one and that it was very light. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. So I think I can go, I can apply like more than I normally would. And I think I want to use a brush. Right? I'm going to try it with my e.l.f. Uh, small, no, airbrush stipple brush that I always use for cream blushes and see what happens. That's pretty. Yes, okay, I like this. I was a little worried that it was going to be too light. And you guys know I like vibrant blushes but that is a really pretty shade and it seems to be going over like all my other products nicely okay let's blend out this side before it like dries down or, or something <laughs> Okay, so you don't need as much product as I thought um, because I just kind of, well, maybe I did have a lot on the 
applicator but I you guys saw like I just did like four dots on each side and it's showing up really nicely yes and it is a matte blush but it doesn't look like a powdery matte oh my skin is so dry on my nose <laughs> wow okay I think that's enough okay I really like this do I need the peach one too no 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 <laughs> cream blush no bite everyone hold me accountable I said that you'll see I'm gonna say that in my inventory video too oh okay so yeah so there's a little arrow so it's on off now and I think it's probably best to always put it off in case like you're storing this somewhere where you might squeeze it down and then the product's all going to come out. There was still so much here. I guess we're just doing a lot of blush today. Just put it everywhere. <laughs> okay, that's... I like that. Yes, I am happy with my choice. I was going to get the peach one, um, but I saw that it was described as nude peach, and I was like, no, I want something more vibrant for like spring and summer. Is that even? Is it brighter on this side? I don't know. Okay, so let's try the Rare Beauty highlighter, finally in Mesmerize. I am hoping this is not too dark for me. I do have Mesmerize in the liquid highlighter as well. Um, but honestly, I think I've used it once, so I can't really tell you much more about how the shade works for me. But I'm going to try and use a fan brush of this. So I'm just going to go over. I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, it's picking it up. I wasn't sure if this was going to be too, like, stiff, like the MAC Star Dipped Face Palette that was in my lash on my stash. I could not get that product on a brush. Okay, there's another hair on my face. Okay, let's try this. Oh. Damn. <laughs> I did not think that was going to be so metallic. Oh. Yeah, normally I like to do my highlighter first because I like to fluff it into my brow. But now I can't do that because I have the Patrick Ta wax in them. So... I really like that and I don't think there's a dark cast um, so I'm very happy that I got this shade let's do the other side okay this is really nice yeah so I think if I would have used the um, glowy blush from Charlotte Tilbury and this it would have been a little like my whole cheek would have been shimmer but it pairs nicely with a matte blush. I am liking this. Because you guys know I have dry skin. So when a powder highlighter goes on nicely, um, it's a win for me. <laughs> I think I've loved everything today. Everything that I've tried, I mean. <laughs> Oh, there's a mess here. Okay, so for my lips, I did already have lip balm on. Maybe let's see my lip now. Okay. That highlighter, I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I got the glowing lips. I got all three shades. So, let's swatch them. What time is it? I have to leave my house soon. <laughs> Look how cute this packaging is. It has hearts on it. 
says ColourPop Glowing Lip. This is the shade Candy Kisses. And these are like twist up. Um, so what I understand from what I've seen online is these are like um, lipsticks but more like a balmy sheer kind of product. At least that's I guess what I understood. Yes, and that's how they feel. So that's Candy Kisses. Um, this one is Tickled Pink. Oh, that one's very like baby pink. And then this one is Red Hot. I love that the packaging is the shade of the lip product. Oh, that one is very red, pigmented. I think for my look today, I'm gonna go with the middle one. So the first one I swatched, Candy Kisses, right? Yeah. Because this is gonna be too, like, blanked out on my, on my face. Let's see, should I use a lip liner? Yes, I should. Yes, I'm gonna use my Maxor lip liner. You can't see that. I just swatched it here to check if it went with that. And yes, this goes with like a lot of nude lips and I really like it. So that's the Mac Soar lip liner. And let's go over it with Candy Kisses. Oh, these feel really nice. And they smell like cake, I think. Ooh. Okay, I really like this a lot. Um, yeah, these feel really nice on the lips. They're not like too thin. Like I feel like this would wear nicely. And they're, even though it's a sheer product, I feel like the color is very even and opaque. Ooh, okay. I'm very happy with this. I would like to see what that looks like though on my lips because that is pink. Um, probably with like a brown lip liner that would look really nice though. Yeah, so let me wipe these off before they go everywhere. Um, and just for fun, because I mentioned it, I'll show you the Barbie things. This is not new whatsoever. Um, but if you're interested, I'm assuming they're still available because they were when I bought the uh, Flirty Talk collection. So this is the Malibu Sunset Duo. So you get a lip liner and a lipstick and they all have the same packaging. They're like um, just plastic, but it feels substantial. And then this is the shade. That looks really pretty. So it's more like a, like a fuchsia. And the lip liner goes with the lip color. So very excited about this, especially for summer. Ooh, damn. Yes, very pretty. I don't know if this is like, okay, they're cream. I don't know much about ColourPop like bullet lip products, but it just says cream un under the name, so that's the cream version, I guess. Then I have Dream House, which is more like a mauve yeah, mauve nude, or like a pinky nude, very pretty. This one also says cream, so maybe they're all, oh, Cream Luck, 
Cream Luxe Lipstick and Lippy Pencil. That's what they are. And the last one is Golden Beach. Oh, this one is like the nude one. You can see from the cap. Oh, these caps are on there. Oh, I think I'm going to really like this one because it's like a peachy nude. Yes, so I'm very excited to wear these shades. So yeah, that was everything. Oh, I didn't do my setting spray. So I have the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Veil Mist in my whole collection project. Um, I said in that video that I couldn't see um, where I, I was, but if you hold it to the light, yeah, you can see it, sort of, and I'm up here. <laughs> this was brand new when I rolled it in, so I'm going to use this for my setting spray. I love the mist on this. It's very, like, fine and even and coats your face evenly. Um, yeah, I don't find, I thought it was supposed to smell like something, but I don't smell anything. Because it says on the back that there's peach extract, lotus, and cucumber, so I guess I felt like that means I would smell those things, but I don't smell anything. But other than that, I like this product. It's a nice, like, heavy glass bottle. Um, I do also like the In Beauty one, but this actually the sprayer on this is not working correctly. It like goes like this, <laughs> like if you know what I mean. There's something like clogged, I don't know what. Um, so I've mostly been using this to activate my brow wax, um, but I have used it on the face. And this is not necessarily just for like setting your makeup, you can use it just to energize or like freshen up throughout the day so I have used it like that also and this one I am down to here which is still a lot of product but um yeah I'm working on it so that's it that is finally the end of this video um I hope you liked it I feel like I forgot something I did also pull out this shimmering body powder from Seoul, but because that highlighter is so much like more punchy than I thought it would be, I don't even think I'm, I don't need this <laughs> today. But that is like a pink um, highlight for your body, but I use it as like a blush topper normally, but I won't use that today. So yeah, that is the end of this video. I liked everything I tried today. My face looks, well, aside from the fact that my skin is so dry on my nose, everything looks good. Um, the, the blush looks great. The highlighter looks great on top of my base products. I love the eyeshadow. I love the lip. Yeah, this was a very successful trying new makeup slash using what I already own. <laughs> so I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!